Hello class, welcome to Algebra Lesson 02, which is all about order of operations and the distributive property. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to evaluate numerical and algebraic expressions by using order of operations, as well as distribute and simplify like terms. So let's start with the um, saying that you guys are probably the most comfortable with when you're dealing with order of operations. You are probably, you've probably heard the word or the phrase PEMDAS before. So this table breaks down PEMDAS and how it works. So P stands for parentheses, okay? So these parentheses can be the ones that you're used to. Parentheses can be square brackets. They can be curly brackets, although curly brackets usually get used for other things. Um, but these are all types of parentheses. And so you always start by simplifying anything inside parentheses. E stands for exponents. And so exponents are those powers. So like 2 to the third power, that's an exponent. Or 5 squared, that's an exponent. M and D, or DM. So um, MD stands for multiply divide. But you always do it from left to right. So that means division can come before multiplication. Okay, so this is a very important thing to remember. This is probably the biggest mistake I see with students using the phrase PEMDAS, is they forget that multiplying and dividing goes from left to right. So sometimes division will come before multiplication. And then A and S stands for addition and subtraction. Again, you do addition and subtraction from left to right. So sometimes you will add and then subtract, and sometimes you'll subtract and then add. And that's okay. Okay, so the phrase, if you just write it out, looks like that PEMDAS. All right, so I'm going to show you how we solve this first example. So as you can see, I have both the square brackets and the curved parentheses. And you'll see that the curved parentheses are inside the square brackets. So when you're dealing with order of operations, you always start with the innermost parentheses. So in this case, that 9 minus 2. So that's going to become 7. So I have 9 minus 2 becomes 7. Everything else stays the same. Okay, so I still have my square brackets. Now, you can see I have inside my parentheses 14, and then there's parentheses with a 7 in it. And whenever there's no, um, like, add, subtract, divide, or anything um, in between a number and parentheses, that means you are going to multiply. So, I'm going to continue to simplify inside my square brackets. So I'm going to do 14 times 7, which is 98. Okay, so then I'm just going to copy down the rest of the problem like it was. Start. Then we have, inside our parentheses, 98 plus 12. So that becomes 110. So again, I copy down everything else, just the same. And now... Just like when I had 14 parentheses 7, I have 5 parentheses 110. So I'm going to do 5 times 110. So I have 550. I copy down the rest of the problem. So then I have 8 minus 550, which is negative 542 plus 6. And when I finish simplifying, I have negative 536 as an answer. Okay, so you can see I started at the innermost parentheses, and then I just kept doing one step at a time, okay? I want you guys to try to solve this problem on your own. Good luck! Okay, hopefully for this question you ended up at 16. And if you're unsure of how I got there, I want you to pause the video and look through the work. Look through all of those steps I showed. Compare it to your work. Maybe you didn't write anything down and you tried to do it all in your head. We're going to start getting to things this year <clears throat> that you can't do in your head. You need to practice showing your work. So on your test for this, I am going to expect you to show work kind of like this, okay? 
Example two, <clears throat> evaluate expressions with variables. Evaluate the expression of x equals 6, y equals 8, and z equals 3. Okay, and then I have my first expression is xy plus z. So instead of x, I'm going to write 6. And then I like to put a multiplication symbol in between when I have two variables together. So I have 6 times y is 8 plus z is 3. Okay, so then order of operations, I start with my multiplication, 6 times 8 is 48, and then I just have addition left, 48 plus 3 is 51, and I am done with that problem. Now let's jump over to the right hand side of the board and plug numbers in for this. So y is 8 plus, again I'm going to put multiplication between x and z, x is 6, try that again, Okay, apparently the board really wants green for the 6, so we're going with it. 6 times 3, all over 2. Alright, so order of operations, when you have these fractions, what you should do is you should treat it almost like there's parentheses around the top, where you simplify everything on the top, then simplify everything on the bottom. In this case, there's nothing really to simplify because it's already just a regular number. <clears throat> and then the last step is to divide. So I have 8 plus 6 times 3. So on the top, the first thing I'm going to do is that multiplication. So I have 8 plus, and then 6 times 3 is 18, all over 2. Not sure why my board keeps switching colors, but sorry about that. 8 plus 18 is 26, all over 2. And then 26 divided by 2 is 13, and that is my final answer. All right, I want you to solve this problem on your own. Good luck. Hopefully your work looked something like mine and you ended up at 16. If you did not get 16 for an answer, pause the video, compare your work to mine, see what happened. If you still have questions, reach out to me and ask for some help. Or you can always ask a friend too. Maybe your friend will be able to help you faster than I will. All right, now let's move on to the distributive property. The distributive property is when you take everything outside and distribute it to everything inside. So in this case, on the outside, I have a four. And you can see I kind of made a weird circle around the four. The reason I did that is so that way I could draw attention to the sign that's in front of the four. Now, some of you might be freaking out and say, Miss Johnson, there's no sign in front of the four. You're right, there is no sign in front of the 4. That means it is implied that this 4 is positive. <clears throat> if this 4 would have had a negative sign in front of it, you would be distributing a negative to everything. Okay, But in this case, I'm distributing a positive 4 to everything inside the parentheses. So I'm going to say positive 4 times 2x, that gives me 8x plus Positive 4 times 7 is 28. Now, some of you might get confused here and start writing equal something. That's not what this is looking for. You can't just throw an equal sign into this problem. This is as far as you need to go for the distributive property problems, okay? You're going to be left with an expression. You're not going to get x equals a number or y equals a number. You're going to be left with an expression, okay? So don't make this tougher than it needs to be. Why don't you go ahead and try this one on your own? Good luck. All right, for this one, hopefully you realized you were distributing a positive three, so you ended up with three X plus 21. All right, I'm gonna do two more problems for you, and this is talking about combining like terms. So if we look in the upper left-hand corner, up here, you'll see we have 12x minus 12 plus 12x minus 16. So what I want to do here is I want to make my life simple. I want to combine anything that's similar to each other. And by actually not similar, exactly like. So what I mean there is I see I have an x right here. And it's just an x. It's not an x squared. It's not an x cubed. It's just x. So I know if I have another term that has just x, I can combine them, and I do. I have two things with an x. I have 12x, and then I have 12x. 
So when I go to combine these, am I going to end up at 24x because I add them, or do I add up, or do I end up at 0x because I subtract them? You might be confused. You might be wondering what on earth is going on. But again, just like with the distributive property, you need to take whatever signs in front of what you're working with. So this first 12x, I have a positive right here, right? It's not written, so it's implied. And then with my other 12x, the sign right in front of it is another positive. So that means I have 12x plus 12x. So that becomes 24x. Now, I have a couple of just regular numbers. I have a 12, I have a 16. But again, I need to take the sign that's right in front of each of these. So I have a negative 12 and a negative 16. So I'm going to say negative 12 minus 16, or I get negative 28. So my final answer is 24x minus 28. And just like the distributive property, you're not going to get x equals something. You're going to leave it as that expression, 24x minus 28. Okay, let's look at another problem that combines the distributive property and combining like terms. So again, I have, you know what, I'm going to actually change this problem. I'm going to say that that's a negative 6, okay? So I'm changing the problem. It's now a negative 6 in front, okay? So I'm going to say negative 6 times 2x is negative 12x. Negative 6 times a negative 2. Negative times a negative is a positive. So that becomes a positive 12. And then I'm going to say plus, and then I have a positive 4 times a 3x, that becomes 12x. And then I have a positive 4 times a negative 4, which is negative 16. So now if I look, here's an x term and here's an x term. I have negative 12x plus 12x. Those are just going to cancel out, right? Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to say 12 minus 16, that gives me negative 4 as an answer, okay? So this one didn't end up as an expression. It ended up as just a regular number, right? And that's okay. That will happen sometimes where things cancel out. Um, but that is how you work with uh, distributive property and combining like terms. If you have any questions on something I said in the video or anything to do with this lesson, please don't hesitate to reach out for um, some help. I'm more than happy to help you. I hope you have a great day.